some of the day-to-day -day activities we uh, we take part in. Um, you know, working with Congress, taking meetings with the staffers and with members of Congress, all virtual now, but previously, you know, walking the halls of Capitol Hill and uh, talking to everyone and expressing our issues and, uh, you know, making sure to be an advocate for public works, you know, tracking various bills and analyzing them as they come up, um, letters of support and concern. You can see all of those on our uh, website under the advocacy letters section of our government affairs page. There's letters to uh, congressional committees, to congressional leadership, to federal agencies expressing APWA's positions, uh, testimony at committee hearings, tracking those key hearings for policy developments, and of course, keeping you as our members informed. Um, you know, that's one of our most important roles to make sure you're aware of the uh, federal policy developments that are going to impact your day-to-day -day work. So any way we can, you know, be a support or a resource to you. We've engaged recently in chapter trainings with the uh, Mid-Atlantic chapter um, virtually where we, you know, kind of talked about how to get involved in advocacy and, um, you know, conferences through uh, social media, through our publications such as The Reporter and um, online through, you know, The Washington Report, a weekly um, summary of what's going on on the Hill. And then again, you know, working with federal agencies and working with coalitions and other working groups that are, you know, have similar interests to APWA, we work with them to, you know, push forward our policy goals. Um, so now getting specifically into workforce development policy. So this is all about, again, how do we ensure that there's a pipeline of, um, of, skilled, and, uh, of skilled individuals who are able to fill a lot of those operator roles as well as you know, the higher level public works roles, how do we ensure that across the spectrum, we're getting people interested in public works, they're realizing the opportunity of a career in public works, and, uh, you know, how, what, from the federal policy angle, how do we help with that? There's a lot that needs to be done on the ground, just spreading the word and, you know, ensuring that people are aware of these, but from the federal angle, how do we help with that? How do we ensure that there's enough uh, attention and funding being given to workforce development? So there's a few areas that we kind of focus on as part of that. Um, the first would be the overall workforce development system. So these are, you know, there's a wide umbrella of worker training programs that go on, uh, mostly under the Department of Labor uh, has, you know, oversight of these programs. Um, so the first would be the Workforce Investment and Opportunity Act grants, also known as WIOA. Um, so these would be the grants that fund state and local workforce development boards. And these boards, you know, their purpose is to try and align job seekers with the careers in the area. So yeah, that's helpful in um, overall uh, getting people to the right place. And you know, specific, it's not specific to public works. A lot of these programs have a wide range of impacts, but they're helpful to public works just as another um, career that needs help. We need help to get people to. And uh, specifically because public works positions at, you know, at the operator level involve so much you know, on-the-job training and uh, you know, skilled requirements. That this is very uh, critical. Uh, so registered apprenticeships are a big part of that. Um, Job Corps is another significant program, you know, that helps train people on the job and provide funding for that so they can get the training they need to take part in these uh, different careers. And then there's a wide range of other programs, you know, uh, uh, trade assistance, uh, dislocated worker grants, just a number of different things that all fall under that umbrella that, you know, we would definitely like to see continue to be funded and continue to be supported. Um, career and technical education is another big, uh, sorry about that. All right, career and technical education is another big part of that. Um, that's under the Department of Education. This is more, you know, it's what you would call vocational or trade school is what most people think of it as. But the, you know, the technical term is career and technical education. That's another thing that we want to support to ensure these uh, skilled positions can be filled, um, continue funding for that which is primarily through Perkins grants. These are grants from the federal government to the states to continue supporting career and technical education. Another area of that is uh, Pell Grants, which are currently the federal government's main way of providing assistance to uh, low-income individuals that are seeking to you know, go to post-secondary education. And that's currently limited only to long-term education, so you know, more of the four-year traditional uh, education and we want to expand that to cover short-term certification so the people that are trying to get you know various licenses and such 
that they are able to use the Pell Grant for that and get to a successful career right away instead of having to go through, you know, a four-year degree. You know, have options for uh, a wide range of people. Um, another issue is uh, eligibility of public works departments for funding. Um, you know, sometimes we're left out when it's coming to uh, water resources or emergency management or transportation bills that are trying to promote workforce development. They you know, have a list of eligible entities for these programs and sometimes public works departments are left out. And that's something that we're really watching out for. That's something that uh, Sean Garcia on the water side of things has uh, been active on with the Water Resources Development Act. There was a uh, provision establishing a new workforce development program for water operators that public works was left out of. And he's been active in trying to ensure that when that final bill passes, it does include public works as an eligible entity. So that's something that we have to keep um, looking at as we go forward. Um, awareness of public works as a career, something I've heard from a wide range of members, is just the, uh, the fact that people just don't think about it. A lot of people just kind of fall into public works without having really thought about it. It's not promoted enough at the high school and college level. So anything we can do to kind of try and promote those career pathways ensure people are just aware of public works as even an option is very important. And then um, another issue that we're starting to look into is a license reciprocity. We've also heard from a lot of members about the difficulty specifically with, you know, uh, water treatment, technicians, construction inspection, some other areas that every state has a different license that makes it very difficult to hire um, these positions that are already difficult to fill. You can't hire people from other states without having to go through a costly license uh you know exam and everything so we're trying to make that see if there's any way that the uh, federal government can encourage states to make that easier so that's something we're, we're uh, looking into um and then this is just a uh, a snapshot of our policy priorities for the 116th session of congress these are developed every two years with the new session of congress um they just reflect our overall priorities on our three main areas, transportation, water resiliency, and emergency management. And workforce development really flows through all of these areas. It's something that we try to incorporate in each area because without the necessary training and workforce, we won't be able to implement, you know, we won't be able to do any of these things. We won't be able to complete transportation projects or, you know, have the water operators that are needed. So it's something that kind of undergirds all of these areas. And you can find the full documents on our uh, website, apwa.net, um, under the Government Affairs page, if you want to go through the you know, very comprehensive specifics that are part of these documents. And then um, a legislative update, just kind of what's been going on on the Hill lately regarding workforce development. Um, the appropriations bills, you know, that's been an ongoing process. Um, the House has been a lot more active on that. The uh, House Education HHS uh, Labor Appropriations Bills, so that kind of handles both Department of Education and Department of Labor workforce development programs. That uh, passed July 31st as part of a larger minibus bill along party lines, so um, without any support from Republicans. Um, it had slight to moderate increases to Department of Labor and Department of Education budgets and these uh, workforce development programs I've talked about. So definitely good that, you know, that that bill would at least hold flat or increase all of these important programs. Um, but the Senate has yet to take up appropriations bills. It doesn't seem likely that there's going to be agreement on uh, appropriations. It seems likely there will be a continuing resolution. But that's something we'll continue to monitor. And then the uh, COVID relief packages, these have taken up a lot of the energy on Capitol Hill. And there was some funding in these three packages that have passed and in the de Democratic proposal for a uh, fourth package that's known as the HEROES Act. But overall, it's been minimal. There has not been a significant injection of funding into the workforce development system. Um, you know, it's been discussed a lot whether as part of jumpstarting the economy, there should be a more significant investment. But that, uh, that proposal is yet to make it into any actual bill. Um, and that brings me to uh, HR 6646, the Relaunching America's Workforce Act. That was introduced in May by uh, Democratic committee chairs of the House Education and Labor Committee and the uh, ranking member of the uh, Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee. It would be a huge investment in the workforce development system. It would cover you know, career and technical education, um, a range of programs under the Department of Labor uh, for a uh, $15 billion investment. Um, 
you know, it has support from those committee leaders, but it has yet to get really any traction. The idea was to include it in a COVID relief package, but it did not make it into any of those bills. So it's it seems unlikely to pass this session, but it's definitely something we want to keep an eye on to inform us of priorities under, you know, what might pass in the 117th Congress coming up. So it's definitely something we'll be continuing to keep an eye on that'll inform us as we continue to see what uh, Congress takes action on with uh, workforce development. And then some of the uh, congressional committees and uh, federal agencies that we work with in this area. So as I mentioned, the House Education and Labor Committee, they have oversight of both, you know, Department of Education, Department of Labor and these programs. The uh, Senate Health, Education, Labor and Pensions, also known as the Senate Help Committee. That would be, the, you know, the counterpart to House Education and Labor in the Senate. Um, and then also the Appropriations Committee, they actually dispense the funding that it, for these programs. So we definitely want to continue working with them. And um, the specific subcommittee is the Labor, Health and Human Services and Education Subcommittee. So that one Labor HHS education bill handles all, pretty much all workforce development and funding. So it's something that we'll continue to work with that committee on. And the federal agencies we work on are the Department of Labor or DOL and Department of Education or DOA, DOE. Department of Labor again handles, you know, those apprenticeship programs, the uh, WIOA grants, those actual worker training, whereas Department of Education, our work with them is around career and technical education, vocational education, and uh, ensuring public works is a, a big part of that. And then I just wanted to show a picture from our uh, meeting back, you know, before the world closed down, right before actually, you know, COVID really hit. The board of directors visited DC. They uh, met with Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos. So she's, you know, the head of the Department of Education, you know, reports directly to the president, sets the policy for that area. I just wanted to show this to show that, you know, we are really seriously engaging with this issue. We're pushing forward and meeting with the, you know, the key stakeholders and, uh, policymakers on this issue and we'll continue to do that you know regardless of administration or you know uh, anything that happens there we'll we'll continue to try and meet with whoever has the influence over these issues at a uh, high level then I also wanted to briefly talk about the uh, what the government affairs committee has been doing on this issue you know the government affairs committee is the lead policy making body for APWA they draft those policy priorities that I talked about earlier um, they, you know, they draft that every two years as part of the new Congress, and um, so they're currently working right now in the 117th Congress, which will start in January. We need all new policy priorities for that, you know, whether that's just some minor edits or whether there's really significant changes which remains to be seen. But as part of that process, the uh, Workforce Development Knowledge Team of the Government Affairs Committee is developing a new document completely focused on workforce development. It won't be a, you know, complete policy priorities document, but it will be a kind of a supplement that outlines, you know, what we're concerned about, what we would like to see Congress do, and we're going to use that in our outreach to the Hill. It'd be very effective to kind of have those specific, um, short to the point documents that really help get our point across to the key staff and key members of Congress. And then finally, I um, just wanted to talk about APWA advocacy tools. These are useful not just for workforce development, but for all of our policy goals, the more that you're engaged as a member, helping us with your stories and experiences and your advocacy to your uh, elected officials is really a huge help. So all of these are on our website, apwa.net, under the government affairs area. Um, a couple different key tools are the Legislative Action Center. Um, that is where you can go and find uh, pre-generated emails to Congress. Um, you can go there, you just fill out your information, it'll send the pre-generated email for you. That's a great way for congressmen to see, you know, it's not just us as staff advocating on this, but this is their constituents that really care about these issues. Um, Tell Your Story is a great tool that just, you know, somewhere you can go and you can write about your experiences, you know, what challenges have you faced in workforce, in high, you know, hiring for your workforce or in other areas, and sharing that that helps us have something to go to the Hill and be, and, you know, say, this is not something that you know, we're making up. This is an actual experience from the ground that you really need to be paying attention to. And there's a number of uh, public works research doc, uh, products, um, including a including um, a water workforce uh, a document that's about you know what challenges is the water workforce and public works facing. 
you know, what, what assistance do they need from Congress? That's a very useful document on the workforce development side of things. And um, so just definitely feel free to use that in your advocacy, use those research products. They're very helpful, provide a lot of useful data. And then finally, our social media is a great place to check and see, you know, what we're really doing, what our day-to-day -day advocacy looks like. Um, you can go and check there on our Twitter, on our LinkedIn, on our Facebook, definitely go there to see, uh, follow and see what's going on. And uh, that's it for the, uh, you know, formal presentation. Um, I hope this was all useful and informative on what we're doing as far as workforce development advocacy. This is something that, you know, we're still shaping in a lot of ways as part of, you know, this supplemental document I talked about we're working on. We're really shaping what our policy is going to look like. And any feedback you have, any thoughts you have is really helpful as we formulate these policies because we want them to align with what you really uh, care about, what really affects you on the ground. So definitely feel free to reach out with any questions or any thoughts you have on that. And um, if you'd like to go ahead and ask any questions you have, uh, feel free. Well, I can't have answered, you know, everything, right? <laughs> there must be some questions left in the world. Um, okay, great. A question from uh, Phyllis. Uh, will you be posting the advocacy tips on the website? Um, I think that's that's a great idea. I mean, I think we're definitely always trying to make more information available on the website as far as how you can uh, get involved with advocacy. I mean, some of these things I talked about are available under our government affairs page, but um, you know, anything I can do to, to make some of these, some of this information available more, um, we definitely want to do. And this presentation specifically will be available on the website. It's gonna be recorded and available online with all the information that I discussed today. So definitely once that's available, feel free to share it with anyone that might um, find this helpful. So uh, thanks, great question. All right. Well, uh, I appreciate everybody. It seems like people have started to sign off. I know we're you know, hitting right at our time. So thank you, everybody, for participating. This has been, I uh, hope this has been very helpful for you. And definitely feel free to reach out with that email or phone number. I'm always happy to answer any questions you have. And um, that'll conclude our presentation. Everybody have a great day.